Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Kings, Canucks tonight, Rogers Arena. All of our guests today, including Nick Nixon, standing by, sponsored by Passant Motors. It's March Mayhem at Passant. All month long, choose either no GST, 4.99% financing on 2020 and newer vehicles, or a $2,000 trade-in bonus. Get all the info at Basant Motors, B-A-S-A-N-T Motors. Dot com. Like I just said, it's the Kings and Canucks, 6 o'clock tonight at Rogers Arena. Uh, we're joined now by the voice of the Kings on Bali Sports. He's been with the Kings since 1981, Nick Nixon. Nick, thanks so much for doing this, sir. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, guys. Um, looking forward to tonight's game, another big Pacific Division matchup. Hey, uh, Nick, before we talk about tonight's game, if you don't mind, uh, I just mentioned with the Kings, you've been with the Kings since 1981. I and Ryan and I, my producer, both of us watched the HBO series Winning Time. I thought it was fabulous. I know it didn't last as long as a lot of people wanted, uh, starring John C. Riley. Were you hired by Jerry Buss? Yes, I was. Um, Jerry Buss had bought uh, the Lakers, Kings, and the building, uh, the Great Western Forum, I believe in 1979. He bought it from the King's original owner, Jack Kent Cook, mm-hmm. who, of course, was a Canadian. Yes. And uh, then I arrived. I was doing games in the American Hockey League for the King's affiliate, the New Haven Nighthawks at the time. And uh, in 1981, they had an opening, and they, uh, and they hired me. But, yes, I was, uh, my first owner in the NHL was uh, Dr. Buss. So, like, uh, like I said, we loved Winning Time. How accurate was it, Nick? I don't know if you watched it or not. You know, I have not watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I and it's interesting. I've been there for forty-three years. I've been to one Laker game, uh, and that was nineteen eighty-six in the finals against the Boston Celtics. So, you know, I don't follow the NBA all that close for the big obvious reason is I'm en- engrossed in. In, in NHL hockey uh, during the same time. But uh, I've heard good things and bad things. Uh, I've heard from many people in L.A. that grew up watching the Lakers and knew Buss and, and uh, uh, Jerry West and Magic John, <laughs> all those people, that it was really over-sensationalized. And I've heard from people that uh, people involved, the actual people, really did not care for it. Hmm. Well, I, I love John C. Riley's uh, performance, and maybe that was good enough for me. Hey, uh, meanwhile, yeah. ho- hockey. Nick, uh, uh, King, King, yes, Kings in third place in the Pacific. Uh, they won three straight. They went through a coaching change. How would you describe their season so far? Um, uh, certainly up and down for sure. I mean, they got off to a great start. They started 16-4-3. And uh, at the time, I think they were tied with the Rangers for the best record in the league. They had the best offense in the league, averaging over four goals a game. They were number one defensively. And Cam Talbot had, you know, some of the best numbers of any of the goaltenders. And then, for whatever reason, uh, in early December, uh, I know I, you hate to pinpoint, it's tough to pinpoint one exact game or instance, but the Kings had a 2 nothing lead on the road on the island uh, in the third period. They had won all 11 road games to that point, and uh, they wound up losing that game in overtime. And that kind of turned things to where they stopped scoring, they gave up goals, and their goaltending went south. So, And, I, and we've talked, to those of us who've been around the team for a number of years, we cannot ever remember a Kings team going from being so good in so many different areas to being so bad in those same areas. It was like overnight a switch was, was turned off or on, however you want to say it. But they've kind of regained that since the coaching change out of the break. And I think they're, they're going to be uh, a tough matchup for any team uh, come playoff time, especially now that they're pretty much a healthy team with – Kempe coming back and Victor Arvidsson coming back, uh, two huge pieces up front. 
And Nick, since the coaching change, uh, Jim Hiller took over. I mean, he, he's from these neck of the woods, coaching the Western Hockey League out here. How has the club performed under him? Well, they've they've rebounded, um, you know, and and I don't know how much credit you give a guy like Jim Hiller, who was a forward in his career, but Cam Talbot out of the break has rebounded, yeah, and given the Kings real good goaltending, as has uh, a longtime backup. <laughs> David Riddick. I mean, Riddick among backup goalies in the NHL, I think he has the best numbers aside from maybe one or two others, uh, Stolars in Florida, uh, Brossois in, in Winnipeg. So when he's come in, he's done the job, and he's been pretty consistent all year. So the goaltending, which for us was a real question mark at the start of this season, because in the summer we had no idea who was going to be in goal for L.A. They signed Talbot to a one-year deal. Riddick to a one-year deal, two veteran goalies, and the goaltending's been good again. Uh, so, again, um, I, I don't know how much of that you credit to Hiller or the goaltending coach, Mike Buckley, but it's turned around, but the rest of the team has turned around. And one thing we've noticed under Hiller is that he's not afraid to shake things up game-to-game game or in-game game with line combinations. And here's an interesting one for you. Not many teams do this uh, unless they have to. I think in nine or ten of the last 12 games, he has dressed seven defense and 11 forwards. And Uh that's with forwards available to go 12 and six. So different looks, uh, different schemes, but you can't argue with the fact that it's been working. I mean, they're 13, seven, and one since he took over. Uh, Nick, uh, I, I've seen some highlight reel goals and plays from Quentin Byfield this year, 21 years old. Um, you know, breakout year, 51 points. He really is starting to become one of the best young players in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we talked to Quentin earlier this year and because uh, he got off to a pretty good start. And um, I said, Quentin, if you had to pick one area where you think you really improved, what is it? And he said he thinks it's his stick work. And if you watch him shift after shift, he's relentless in hunting down, pursuing pucks, and at 6'5", he's got the long reach. So why not use that to your advantage? And he'll break up plays, uh, break up uh, outlet passes. Um, he's, he's learning how to battle along the boards, which I think he, he, didn't, he wasn't doing very well as an 18-, 19-year-old in the NHL only because he probably never had to do it in juniors, right? Because he was so big, uh, so much bigger than everybody else. But playing against men night after night, I think his his experience now and his strength and his just his his knowing what to do when, those are some of the things, aside from scoring and passing, which, you know, are the obvious statistics, I think that's why he's become – a real force out there for the Kings. Nick, what's your opinion of Pierre-Luc Dubois' first season with L.A.? Disappointing. Um, here's a guy they traded for uh, to give them depth down the middle uh, because that was an issue the last two playoff meetings with Edmonton. Uh, you've got Kopitar, you've got Deneau, who are pretty responsible centermen, right? They have been throughout their careers. And Deneau gets a lot of the, the tough matchups night after night. Yeah. So they figured if they could add P.L. Dubois, uh, the matchup game would be more difficult for teams. Uh, did not get off to a very good start. Um, to me, the I guess that stick to if that's the correct word, yeah. just second effort, um, playing inspired I didn't see that early on Uh, saw spurts of it Um, since the coaching change he's been better so maybe he's trending in the right direction going into the postseason but here's a guy that next year and well for the next seven years after this year will be the king's highest paid forward yeah he has got to be an impact right if you're if you're getting that kind of compensation you have to be a consistent impact night after night and unfortunately for whatever reason i have not seen that we have not seen that night after night yet this season 
Nick, uh, above and beyond, we, we can't thank you enough. Man, since 1981, that's just uh, outstanding. Thanks so much for this. We really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, when I my first game was uh, November 18th, 1981, mm-hmm. and the great Marcel Dion scored four goals against oh. Detroit. Oh, uh, And I think the Kings, Kings won the game 8-1, to and after the game I said, this is going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And, of well, course, <laughs> I had to wait 30-some years for the Kings to win a cup. But, yeah, it was well worth the wait. Yeah, and, of course, that would have been Marcel victimizing his old team, the, the, the Detroit Red Wings. At yes. least you got a couple of Stanley Cups in, in your back pocket there, Nick. At least the Kings do. Yep. So that's more than we can say up here. <laughs> well, be patient. That yeah. was the word we used in L.A. for all those years. <laughs> well, we've been patient. <laughs> we've been patient, believe me. <laughs> I know you have. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Nick. All right, guys. Yeah, I appreciate yep. it. Bye-bye.